With huge, great, wide open aperture size comes great responsibility. Hi everyone, welcome to pal to tech Today we are reviewing the 7 Artisans 35mm f0.95 APS-C lens for Fujifilm cameras. Let's get into it. First off, although 7 Artisans was kind enough to send us a copy of this lens to test out and review, no one at 7 Artisans was permitted to preview this video nor assist in its creation in any way. I'm just here to share with you my real-world experience of using this lens and to provide you with my overall impression of it. This lens currently sells for about 250 US dollars. You know, in doing this review, it was impossible for me not to compare it to this Yongyi Miticon Speedmaster 35mm f0.95 which retails for $450, or about $200 more than the Seven Artisans. The very first thing you should be aware of is that this is an all manual lens in every respect. It does not talk to the camera whatsoever. There's no EXIF data that it will be saved and viewed in Lightroom and you will be shooting in all manual mode for all of your focusing and setting of your aperture. Luckily, your Fujifilm camera has a wonderful manual focus peak highlight setting that can greatly help you with nailing focus in manual focus lenses. I have a whole video that explains exactly how to use manual focus peak setting. Be sure to check that video out after watching this video. For 250 US dollars, I was genuinely surprised at both how solid the lens felt as well as the materials used in its construction. Right down down to the gray metal on the rear of the lens. I did have one issue with the construction choice they went with, but I'll get into that shortly. The lens weighs in at 369 grams. The lens features a 12 blade aperture construction. The optical structure of this lens is 11 elements within eight groups. The front of the lens takes a 52 millimeter filter size. Also, there's no lens hood that was included with this lens. Now, the lens cap has, let's just say, a unique way of attaching. It basically just goes on there and theoretically stays in place. There's no kind of click that holds it into place. It just kind of glides on, you know, feels nice, right? But I found my... Exactly. The minimum focus distance on this lens is 0.37 centimeters. The aperture ring is clickless, more on that in a moment, and ranges from f16 all the way up to f0.95. Speaking of an aperture of f0.95, let's talk about that for a moment. That is a very narrow depth of field. On one hand, it's wonderful to have that extra stop of light when you need it. I mean, it really does make a difference when you're at say f1.4 you think that's it and but suddenly you can turn the ring a little bit and now you're down to f0.95 and that extra light does make a huge difference that being said even with focus peak highlighting enabled I struggled using this lens at f0.95 in a number of situations, especially when things are moving fast. It can sometimes be very difficult to keep the area you want in focus. While we will be looking at raw images coming from this lens, you will see in the software that each one of them indicates f1.0. That's because, as I mentioned, the full manual nature of this lens prevents EXIF data from being captured as to what aperture is being used. So I'll add titles to each image that will indicate the specific aperture I used in the shot. This shot right here was taken at f0.95, and it really shows you how narrow the depth of field can be. Have a look at this leaf right here. Even as small as the leaf was, it's not all entirely in focus. I mean, we are talking some serious narrow depth of field. If you have an object moving around, you might want to put the camera in continuous high burst mode because chances are you might end up having to spray and pray, <laughs> okay? Taking this lens out and about as I did, I noticed that the overall color rendering is slightly more 
muted than say the Fujifilm 35 millimeter. It has a softer, almost warmer look to it. I'm not saying it doesn't reproduce colors accurately because it definitely does but rather it seemed a bit more on the muted softer side. I, I can't describe it any better than that. Take a look at the center of the lens at F0.95 and you'll see it's definitely a bit on the soft side with a little bit of purple fringing. Let me zoom to 200% right here. Now this is pretty much gone once you stop down the lens to f2. Also, it becomes sharper in the center, as you can see. Also at f0.95, the corners are not very sharp at all. Same thing with f2. And in fact, it isn't until you get to f5.6 that you have sharpness across pretty much the entire image range. So for example, the image on the left is f2, the image on the right is f5.6, clearly sharper in the center. <laughs> And no doubt about it, same with the corners. In fact, I would say that F5.6 is probably the sweet spot for this lens, although F4 is pretty darn close. Here's the corner on F4 versus F5.6, and zoomed in at even 200%, they are both pretty much identical. You go back to 100% and you will not be able to tell the difference. At F16, I found this lens really holds its image quality with not so much diffraction softness as comparable to, or at least better in some cases than some of the Viltrox lenses that I tested. Here we have the Seven Artisans on the left and the Miticon on the right. Both lenses are at F0.95 aperture. And as you can see, both lenses do an outstanding job of subject isolation under these conditions. The background on both lenses is beautiful and smooth, and frankly, for less than $200 than the Miticon, this is pretty good at 0.95. Here we have it at f2, and as you can see, very similar as well. Color rendition is outstanding, the background almost identical. One thing I will say is that the Miticon is sharper in the center at f2, no question about it. Have a look at the leg right here compared to here. You see that? The Miticon is sharper at f2. And here it is at f0.95. Again, the Miticon sharper in the center. But pulled back with background isolation, very difficult to tell. One thing I did notice was that in the depth of field area where it went from blurry to in focus, on the Seven Artisans, there was a bit more of a pronounced line than on the Miticon, which had a bit more blur. It's really hard to see, and I am seriously pixel peeping here, but it was something that I noticed that I thought I should mention. I don't think anybody else on the planet would probably notice this. And this whole narrow depth of field at, you know, 0.95 aperture really gets back to my other point about what you really want to use this lens for, and that it really is almost for special situations like that. Like a shot such as this, where you're isolating one similar subject out of many, this can be very effective in that focal range. However, with other situations, you may find that it has sometimes almost a toy camera look if you're not careful with what you're shooting. That being said, let's now talk about bokeh and the background isolation that you can get from this lens. Pleasing background is such a subjective part of an image. At f1.4 or f2 for portraits or photographing people, I was generally pleased with the background of this lens. At f0.95, it really makes the subject pop almost to a 3D quality. In some cases that can work, while in other cases, particularly some nature shots, I found that the bokeh shapes were a little too sharp for my taste. Other times, however, everything just clicked and the background isolation was absolutely stunning. I did have a few issues with this lens. Number one is the lens cap itself. It was kind of easy for me to, you know, to do that. So I would have preferred some way of just click attaching this thing like the Fuji lenses have or the Viltrox. More importantly, however, is number two, which is the clickless aperture ring. It was a little too easy for me to turn this aperture ring compared to the Miticon or other lenses that I've used. And I found myself constantly knocking this out of the aperture. Particularly if you see right here where it says eight to 16, you barely move it just a little bit and suddenly you've changed aperture. And when you're trying to focus in a quick situation and your fingers are accidentally knocking up next to it, I far would have preferred an aperture ring that you can click down 
down each setting and that has some firmness and stays in place. Or if you're gonna go clickless, it needs to be made tighter so that it's not so easy to accidentally bump and move it. Keep in mind that when you start going below F1.0 into the great wide open aperture sizes comes great responsibility. And it's much harder to focus an F0.95 lens manually, particularly when you're wearing a face mask and it's fogging up your glasses. So I'm a bit biased. Nevertheless, there are special considerations you should be aware of if you plan on shooting with such a wide open aperture. Lastly, there was no lens hood included and I really wish they hadn't omitted that. I noticed quite a bit of lens flaring in this lens, particularly at these wider apertures and I think a lens hood would have helped out with that. For many of you, there is definitely a place in your photography toolkit for a lens of 0.95 aperture. And at $200 less than its closest competitor that I know of, coupled with excellent build quality, this lens should be given serious consideration if you're needing a focal range of less than F1. I do wish the aperture ring had been a little tighter, and hopefully this can be addressed in a future version of this lens. I'm gonna give the Seven Artisans 35 millimeter F0.95 lens for Fujifilm a B. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. And I will see you in another video again real soon. Until then, take care.